The typical mirror is a sheet of glass that is coated on its back with aluminum or silver, which produces images by reflection. The mirrors used in Greco-Roman antiquity and throughout the European Middle Ages were simply slightly convex, highly polished disks of metal. The chemical process of coating a glass surface with metallic silver was discovered by me, Justice von Liebig, in 1835, and this advance inaugurated the modern techniques of mirror making. Hand mirrors were adopted by the Celts from the Romans and by the end of the Middle Ages had become quite by the end of the Middle Ages they had become quite common throughout Europe usually being made of silver Full body mirrors weren't available until the 1st century AD Venetian mirrors were quite famous until around the 17th century when Venetian workers spread their secrets to the rest of Europe The 19th century saw the industrialization of mirrors Thereafter, mirrors became very common and cheap. Attire. Safety goggles must be worn at all times, while in the laboratory. Closed toe shoes and long pants must be worn in the lab. Long hair must be tied back when using open flames. Conduct. Eating, drinking, and smoking are strictly prohibited in the laboratory. No unauthorized experiments are to be performed. Never taste anything. Never directly smell anything. Instead. Waft a small sample to your nose. Always wash your hands before leaving the lab. Learn where the safety and first aid equipment is located. Notify the instructor immediately in case of an accident. Proper handling of chemicals and equipment. Consider all chemicals to be hazardous, unless you are instructed otherwise. Know what chemicals you are using. Carefully read the label twice before taking anything from a bottle. Excess reagents are never to be returned to stock bottles. Many common reagents are highly flammable. Do not use them anywhere near open flames. Always pour acids into water. If you pour water into acid, the acid may splash. If chemicals come into contact with your skin or eyes, flush immediately with water and consult with your instructor. Never point any container that you're heating at yourself or your neighbor. Contents may escape while being heated. Dispose of chemicals properly. Unless you are told otherwise, assume that only water may be put in the lab sinks. Clean up broken glassware immediately and dispose of it properly. Never leave burners unattended. Turn them off whenever you leave your workstation. Be sure that the gas is shut off at the bench rack when you leave the lab. Got it. Okay, so we're doing the silver mirror experiment, and uh, um, these are our materials. We have a solution of dextrose, uh, and a, a solution of ammonium nitrate, and we have two Florence flasks, one for the actual experiment, one for practice. We also have a 100 milliliter beaker, 10 milliliter uh, graduated cylinder, and a solution of sodium hydroxide. We have silver nitrate solution, which is moderately toxic, and acetone for rinsing the Florence flask. We rinsed out the Florence flask with acetone, and we allowed it to air dry, so we that to the side. Um, we measured out 5 ml of ammonium nitrate, 5 ml of silver nitrate, and 10, 10 ml of dextrose solution. And we're going to combine, combine the ammonium nitrate and the silver nitrates. Gently mix. And then we add the dextrose solution. and that completes step three. So the solution that Michael created, I'm going to add to the flask. And 
I also added 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to this graduated cylinder, and now I'm going to add this to Michael's solution. Add the stopper, and now I'm going to mix it gently. And now I'm going to rotate the flask like this so the solution covers every side. So this is the final product, it is a silver mirror, and so to get rid of the solution inside, you will pour the solution down the drain, and put the running water on that, and then you will rinse the flask with distilled water. And pour that down the drain. Now that we have this finished product, all that's left to do is clean up the materials.